Greetings Peepazoids, my name is Bubs, and welcome to day one of my 30 day gaming challenge. I'm doing this to celebrate my one year, or the one year anniversary of the channel. Very exciting. And the purpose of this challenge is, so as the name implies, it's one game every day for the next 30 days. And it'll be a mix of brand new games, old games, primarily games that I've never played before. Maybe some games that have sort of been hovering around my periphery um, that I've never sort of picked up and tried. So this will be a nice way to sort of expand, try different things, silly games, serious games. I'm just going to have fun with it. And I hope you guys, if you're watching, are having fun with it too. Um, if you have any suggestions of what games to try, I would love to hear them down below. And if um, you are new to the channel, um, any comments down below, any likes you can give, any sort of consideration for a subscribe. I don't like name dropping that, but if you could, that would be awesome. If not, I'm just happy to have you here. And we are kicking this off with a game called The First Tree. Now this is something of a different experience to what I usually have on the channel, and that is, it's about a fox searching for its cubs. I think that's what you call a fox's children. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Um, which also parallels this story of a young boy. I don't know much more beyond that, but I'm very interested to find out. So let's get started. A new game. And let the story begin. And also the purpose of this is I'll be playing between 20 minutes to 40 minutes of each game just to get a great impression of what that game is like. Maybe an hour, depends on the game, but we'll soon see. Oh, wow. May have to turn that music down in a bit, guys, because that's deafening me a little. <laughs> oh, I wonder, can I do that now? No. Oh, there's our lovely Foxy. Oh. Are you awake? I thought I heard you get up. Okay, so before we get too into it, subtitles. Okay, yeah, and we're back. I'm awake. Sorry, I just can't sleep. Are you thinking about about him? So be yeah, the, a bit. You should get back story. to sleep, my love. I'm fine. No, no, it's okay. What else is on your mind? This thing is so beautiful. It seems weird, but I had one of the most vivid dreams of my life. I saw a fox on a That's snowy us. mountain, just looking confused and worried. Those eyes, I can't get those eyes out of my head. She was running in the windy snow, looking for something. Do you looking think for it has kids. to do with, with you and what's been going on? I don't know. Oh, we can double it was jump. Just Check a us out. Rachel. They're not meant to make sense. A lot's happened the past couple days. That's all. Well, if you're not going to sleep Love anyway, this. you should tell me. I want to hear. All right. This is some gorgeous environment. Can I just say that? Yes, that'll be the boy that's sort of narrating alongside the fox. And the sounds of it appears we are part of his story. I want to see what that story entails. It's a fox. Just a fox in the snow. It's just a beautiful image. Even down to the, the colors contrasting and everything. Hey, snow paw prince. Woo <laughs> okay. Let's get right in. What shall I name you? Oh, are we out? Can we not run? Oh. I don't know if we can climb up here, can we? Oh, I will use my magic double jump. <laughs> Let's continue the journey. Maybe we'll find our way. Weird um, starting off this sort of challenge with a game like this, because a game like this demands that it be played in full, so you get the full experience of the narration because it is about the story it's about 
getting immersed. And I'm... You guys haven't... Really get yourselves set into it. Okay. Let's follow. That sun is gorgeous. Oh. I hope we find our cubbies. And figure out more about the boys' story, too. Oh, look at that. It's one of our cubs. So, not far from her home, she followed that path to something unexpected. Oh no, please tell me it... No! Oh no, it's not! I was not expecting that. She couldn't stay, though. She had to find her other two children. So she took that path. Oh, I can feel the she emotions followed it already. Towards something ancient. Something with answers. The first tree, I'm guessing. Oh, wow. Oh, if this game forced me to see these... The fox looked high and low, searching for any sign of her cubs. The points of light showed the way to this ancient tree. Oh, wow. It was as if each one had a story to tell, all their own. The land was trying to tell my story, too. I felt like I was right behind her the whole time. is already going to hit me in the feels, I can tell. Oh, I think I see something. Rabbits! Have you seen my kids? Am I supposed to eat them? I hope not. I want to be a nice, friendly fox. I see a ray of light. Am I supposed to be heading that way? We're a kid's dream, or a man's dream. But such a lovely dreamscape feel to it. This is this is beautiful, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, is that a park? I guess we'll find out before long. Come on, Foxy, you can do it. I'm going to call her Sheila. Oh, here it is. As a kid, did you ever do show and tell in your class? Yeah, I, I think I only did it once. When I was in the fourth grade. You know how my life was around then. I wanted to show my class what helped pass the time and distracted me. So I brought a dozen paper cranes I had made. I think I told everyone how badly I wanted to be a bird and fly, <laughs> embarrassingly enough. Don't be embarrassed. Every kid wants to fly. For me, it was another toy for my dad, a wooden boat. That's what we dug up. I remember guarding it so carefully in my hands as I walked into class. When I sat down, a group of boys immediately made fun of it. They asked which trash can I found it in, or why an ugly log was my favorite toy. When I got up, I didn't even want to tell them my dad had carved it. I said it was a joke gift my friends had given me. Oh. Kids can be so cool. Some they of them can. are. I shouldn't have let them get to me, but it did. It's amazing we bounce back at all. Always do. Doesn't matter how fancy something is or how expensive it is. It's what it means to you that's important. And that boat meant a lot to him. Oh, here's more of these stars. Oh, let's get out of the bush. I could just listen to this music all day. 
Look at all this. Pictures and a clock. I see more lights over here. We got this. Jump! There's another light up there. Let's follow it. Come on. younger. My nan used to make me, I used to be obsessed with Batman. And my nan would make me, <laughs> she made me Batman capes um, from bath towels. She didn't really do anything to them, but simple things like that. Just, I love my nan. And what we got here. Usually those kids would leave me alone, but somehow they could tell I was different. They made fun of how far away I lived. They called my dad a sourdough. I was a blabbermouth as a kid. Sorry about that. my dad stories I made up for hours. But after that show and tell, I didn't tell him much anymore. He didn't know exactly what was wrong, but his best guess was that the toys he carved weren't cool enough. He carved oh, me a tank. He tried to tell me what it was like to be in a real tank as a serviceman. I didn't know your dad was in the military. Yeah, yeah so. in the army. The sad thing is that I pretty much Over forgot there. until just now. There's so much I still don't know about him. I'm sorry. He knows how much you love him. You're going to see him again soon and have some closure. I'm sure. Uh, he's lost his dad. Or his dad's in the military. Look at this. Big tank. That's cool. Oh, there's a star up there. Should we go get it, Foxy? Let's do this. Come on. Climb the mountain. stars out there. Lots of stories. Let's get to it. We're a dream fox. Nothing can hurt us. Look, even the snow has like a dream-like pastel quality to it. Just beautiful. Still need to find our cubs or our children. Just gotta follow the light. Oh, what's this? I think I see something. <laughs> it's a ball! <laughs> That's cute. It's like a child's. Child and the wilderness kind of all mixed into one. Absolutely lovely. This fox is so winter ready. It's unreal. Come on, Foxy. See another story. myself, why talk to anybody anyway? Why bother when I'm happy by myself? I started drawing a lot, mostly I animals I saw younger. in the woods by my home. I then imagined designing my own hideouts with things like TVs and pantries full of chips and cookies. <laughs> I think that idea of leaving home and drawing blueprints started my career. I found a lot of solace in that. I'm not surprised, but I did the same thing, you know? 
There's something special about having a place to call your own. Yeah, there is. Now look at us. Well, if you count renting in an overpriced city. <laughs> <laughs> it's as close as we can get for now. Oh, I hear ya. Oh, that's so awesome. So many small things in your childhood you don't realize contribute to what you do when you're older. I studied performing arts, but I was shy of anything when I was a kid. I did drawing and then amateur dramatics and now I'm recording videos on YouTube, so <laughs> make what you will of that. Uh... Oh, get that star. Get it. There you go. Right, come on, Foxy. Have we got any more pillars around here to find? Oh no, but I see a star. I see several stars. Oh, and another story down there. Let's not leave without it. I want to know everything. Dig it up. Do you remember what my dad did for a living? Wasn't he like a lumberjack? That's one way of putting it. If wood was a canvas, then a carving knife was his paintbrush. The even after working also. a 50 hour week, even after his hands were more splinters than skin, he would bring home the nicest piece of Alaskan weeping cedar and make me toys. That wooden train was the first toy I can remember, and I loved it. I just knew from a young age I was going to be a lumberjack, like my father. Wow. The sign of a good dad, right there. Doing stuff like that. Okay, I think we've got another star here, and then... On to greener pastures. Up the slide! Go on! Oh, too far. <laughs> There we go. Alright, I think I saw a way out of here. Let's get to it. I'm starting to get a better understanding of why this game's called the first tree. Dad was a lumberjack. Who, from being a child, wanted to be one. Let's see where this goes. To the sunlight, Foxy. Oh, there's more stars up there. I want to see where this story takes us. Is it raining or snowing? I can't quite tell. But we'll lead our way this way. The game take you through the seasons. Oh, that's awesome. We must be in spring. Uh, another memory. My teenage years were full of sketching, angst, and trouble. I wasn't popular oh, or unpopular, nice. even though I mostly just watched the chaos ensue. <laughs> we did it all. Put fireworks in mailboxes, hide roadkill in people's garages, break windows in the barber shop in Anchorage. My dad was furious, but he was so busy working he couldn't do much to stop me from going out. I think being an adult means there's no one to stop you making hard decisions. He had to make a living, and he couldn't be in two places at once. It's true. Yeah, I realize that now. But at the time, I was sure he was more interested in growing his business than what was going on with me.
Hmm. Not sure what to do there. Anyway, we'll carry on. A lot more story to tell. What's this now? Butterflies? Oh, I need the butterflies to fly. Oh, now that is... That's gorgeously crafted. Let's try it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, they don't last. Okay. Right, come on, Foxy. Let's gather up those butterflies again. There we are. Let's see what's up here. Oh, no. Don't get stuck, Foxy. But your babies to find. It's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. story. Still haven't found all our children yet though. We've got two more cubs to find. We'll find them soon. Yes, we will. It's this then. After he drove me home from the police station, I blew up at him. Saying how I never wanted to be like him, how I was going to be someone and leave that hick icebox for good. He just looked forward at the road with tired eyes. I took out that bluegrass tape from the cassette deck and chucked it out the window. In my wow. sage teenage wisdom, I thought I had proved the ultimate point. But my dad had a different idea. He slammed the brakes, slowly bowed his head while gripping the steering wheel, and finally looked at me. All he said, like it was a polite request, was, make this right. I sat there in silence, fuming, but I eventually got out and combed every square inch of the woods, muttering profanity after profanity. I found it 30 minutes later, near a small waterfall off the road. I went back to the truck, put the wet tape back in, and sure enough it worked. We didn't speak another word to each other the rest of the night. I knew you were a crazy teenager, but... It's hard to believe, isn't it? It surprises me, too. It's like I didn't really know who that kid was back then. I bet my dad thought the same thing over and over. It's almost like he was saying, make this right to himself, more than to me. It's tough. It's tough. Dad sounded like a wise sounds. I don't want to talk about his head. Sounds like a wise person. I'm not going to get those butterflies, am I? Nope. Right. Let's press on, Foxy, my friend. New Horizons. If you guys are watching this, you probably, if you played this game, you might think I'm missing things, but. Just taking in what I can. Okay. Oh, I need three butterflies to get over that cliff. Wow. Okay. Well, sounds... I don't know how I'm going to get... I'm guessing I've got to grab the one up there first. But how am I supposed to grab all of them? without using them, if that makes sense.
do this without jumping. Right, we've got our three sets of butterflies. My Just friends would laugh about that night and talk about how crazy it was. And I laughed along, pretending it didn't bother me. But it did. I imagined my friends growing old in the bush, unable to find that thrill in those godforsaken ice fields. It's like those mountains were a literal wall, keeping me from leaving, where all I would have to look forward to are lumber yards and evening beers. I had to climb over. Mm. That was my only goal for a long time. Such a good use of metaphor. If I could get the damn jump. <laughs> Hang tight, people. Okay, here we go. Yes! On to the next journey. Go, Foxy! Follow the light, and it will lead us the way. If there was some way I could take my love of drawing and turn it into a way of escape, nothing would make me happier. Pick up. Oh, our I wanted to create instead of tearing trees down. Hey, hey, it's a bus. I wanted to move to the lower <laughs> 48, not because I hated it there in Alaska, but I hated the idea of it. It's like all of that spite inside me had created this monster which followed me around my whole teenage years. Oh, I put so much energy into doing what others didn't expect of me. Why did I do that? There's one fact you're forgetting, though. If you didn't have that fire in you, we probably would have never met. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Maybe the, the destination is all that matters in the end. But then why am I awake? Why am I seeing this fox go on her journey? And why can't I stop thinking about my dad? Maybe the fox is a, and her children is a metaphor for the journey he's taken to reconnect with his dad. Sort of my takeaway from this, and that's what I love about these kinds of stories, it's all interpretive storytelling. I don't expect the answer to be laid out for us. Right, summer months. All right, Foxy, we've got a job to do. Let's get doing it. I love the fact the wilderness just changes. Such... Oh, is that the tree? Such a beautiful dreamscape. The tree gonna show us, I wonder. Better not make me cry. I don't think I could handle it if it made me cry. <laughs> Here we go. Even at my most distant, at the times when I detested him the most, he kept reaching out. Oh, there's a knife. For a year straight, he asked me every week when we were going camping. I thought he was just dense. Eventually, to shut him up, I agreed. We carried out the worn lawn chairs from the garage and set up a cinder block campfire at the site we'd always used behind the house. Wow. We walked down the mountain path, talking in the warm sunshine we only got a couple months of the year. Those three obsidian rocks shimmered alongside the shore, almost like sparklers pressed against a dark window. I'll never forget that wet stone on my feet, or how those massive mountains looked even bigger in the lake's reflection. I felt small, but grateful. As the sun set, my dad found something I hadn't seen for a long time. The tree where I'd made my first carving when I was six. I hadn't even carved it. Oh, my dad yeah. had helped me, but I still called it my tree. Something about seeing my name there made me open up, and we talked about everything that night in that old camouflage tent. I told him how much I love sketching and design, and how it would be a dream to study architecture oh, in Seattle. I told him how I didn't get along with my friends much anymore, but that I didn't mind being alone. He told me he was there for me, 
And he joked that if all he had to do was write my name on a tree to finally get me to talk, he would have left me carved logs with novels on them in front of my room <laughs> every morning. <laughs> I don't know why oh, wow. it took me that long to realize it, but it was then I knew how much he had sacrificed for me. Oh, Joseph. There we go, got it. One of three. We've got more rocks to find. I think we do. Emotional. Sweet and emotional. It can be the simplest thing if you... I don't know if anyone has been estranged, but... Sometimes it can be just the simplest thing that can reunite someone with someone. Whether it be a friend or a parent. So sweet. Joseph. Got another story here. My dad built a lot of stuff in his free time. If he wasn't watching fly fishing or reading Tom Clancy novels, he was carving something. He made tons of birdhouses. Not that he was into bird watching, but I think he really missed working and adding on to the home. If he couldn't afford the time to build onto our own house, you would have to settle with watching birds move into their little homes. We kept an old mattress in the bed of that ugly yellow truck, so we would drive it deep into the woods and then watch the birds fly into their houses while the sun set. Usually it was accompanied by venison jerky or a cold coke, but not a lot of talking, which is how we both liked it. Sometimes words aren't needed. A lesson I could probably use as a YouTuber. <laughs> To be fair. But yeah. These stories are just so... Magical. Where are my children? Oh. Oh, sorry. It's not my child, it's just a leaf. We're all good, guys. See another pillar of light over here. I promised myself these challenges would just be like 40, like depending on the length of what the game needs. Like a snapshot, like 20, 40 minutes of the game. Ah, oh, there's another pillar up there. I think this is how we get to it. But I, I genuinely just want to see where this story ends. If this ends up being an hour, so be it. But I don't think meant to give a great impression of the game and I don't think a game like this is complete unless we see how it all ends so we need to get these three pillars and that's two one more. Might be it that, that way. Go, Foxy! Because if the game is taking us through the seasons as well, then we still have spring. No, not spring. It wouldn't be spring. It's, um... What have we had? Winter, summer, autumn. Autumn is what we need to find. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find autumn, if that is indeed the autumn that we seek. 
Here's another patch. On our property, there were old abandoned pieces of a shed and car long left unused. I used to ask him all the time who those people were that left all this junk. And I'm sure he got so tired of hearing it that he made up some elaborate stories how a brown bear ate them and haunted the woods <laughs> afterwards. What's funny is I think it made those people seem more real. Growing up thinking they were still hanging out like they couldn't say goodbye. I used to tell my friends how I could swear I saw spirits move near the water, and that always freaked them out. I guess it didn't bother me, because the way I saw it, they were normal people with old cars and sheds, just trying to figure out how to survive and be happy in the middle of nowhere. It was a cool thought that they didn't want to leave, but you know, I was a weird kid. <laughs> well, you had good company since those ghosts like living in a place where they were brutally devoured. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being weird, Joseph. I should know. I like to think I'm quite a weirdo. This game is just so engaging. I'm literally doing this all in one sitting. I'm not sure what these stars amount to. But we'll find that third pillar. I think that's what's gonna give us the final story that we need. Oh. Well, we have another story on our hands. We were happiest underneath the evergreens. We decided it was time to finally map out the hundreds of acres we lived on just to pass the time during the summer. He was only free in the evenings, so I would spend the day wasting time on dial-up internet and sketching, and then we would rush into the woods, pen and map in hand, before evening fell. Sometimes, the aurora borealis would cast a cold green glow on the mountainside, and we would finish our route underneath a twilight sky. Sometimes, I was lonely during those summer days, but there was comfort in the routine. A lot of teenagers aren't looking for the daily grind, though. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get out, to leave your childhood home. You wanted to progress, to make something of yourself. Yeah, you're right. That house. I'm sure it's the same as how I left it. But then why does it feel so different? I doubt you're the only adult to have looked back and asked that question. It's a good point, though. Your childhood home will always feel different when you've grown up. Your old bedrooms somehow become smaller. Toys and things don't seem as fun as they could have been. I mean, I look back on my childhood home and... No, it wasn't the most thrilling in the grand scheme of it all, in some cases. And, but it was lovely. It was, it was my childhood home. It was for me. I think I've got more of an appreciation of my childhood home, now that I think about it. Not to get too soppy on you guys, I think the game's doing that enough for anyone. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. Curious if you guys, any of you guys there, sort of ever gone back to your childhood home and... How it compares, like, growing up if you're an adult or an older teenager. Growing up, how it... how it looks. And how it feels to be there. That'd be really curious to know. If you don't mind sharing, of course. Here it is. Hidden amidst the stones. I think that's removed the branches that were behind the tree. Let's go take a look. Don't quite know what to expect now. I think we're about to find out. Oh wait, is it I can see something there. Can I see that? It's a wolf. The wolf Joseph drew. stood nearby, unfazed, like nothing was wrong. 
My dad is dead. Oh, and he's never there. coming back, Rachel. I can tell you these stories, but I can never reminisce with him again. He can never hold a grandchild that we'll probably never be able to have. I can never talk to him again, and I'll never be able to say I'm sorry. For everything. I had a funny feeling that's where Joseph's story was heading. Damn. So is his dad taken from him? Talked about a perpetrator, meaning the wolf. I'm not entirely sure. I can see more pillars of light up ahead. Don't know if this is the end of the story. Here we are at the pillar. Maybe one final memory or... Joseph. I don't know if the story's coming to an end, but Joseph's narration has stopped. Our fox still needs to finish her journey. This is a dreamscape. Joseph, what's that song? You can't go to sleep feeling like this. I'm sorry for everything, and I know you need space, but I'm here for you. You don't need to feel so lost. Joseph, have I ever told you what my mother was like? Mother Fox. Never go to sleep feeling like that. I'm just following the shooting star here. Look at her just galloping on the waves. You have strength, Joseph, and you're not as alone as you think. It's all just so pointless. Just waiting for life to happen. Oh, Joseph. Like having the home I always wanted is cursed out of my reach. The thought of being a parent myself. How could I do that when I couldn't even be a good son? I'm sorry. I know what you're saying. I just don't know how things will work out. These quiet hours will turn into years. We'll wonder which roads passed us by. Then we'll forge a new road, together. Besides, I discovered for myself that one fateful morning where any hopeful road leads to. There may be thorns and mist, but 
it always leads to the same thing. And what's that? Family. I am so glad that you're part of my family, Rachel. And I'm glad you're part of mine. Look at them all. There might be some hope just up that yonder hill. You ready for this, Foxy? screen you ruined the moment the fox knew her last cub would be waiting for her at the first tree she was almost there the rain cascaded onto the jade valley where the entrance to the tree was life was protected there because that's where life began it was now only a mother and a daughter left Items from my life still dotted the ground as she moved closer to her destination and destiny. I have to see the story out, guys. I'm sorry.
do love the sense of imagery. I've got a famous, uh, now famous quote from The Dark Knight. Night is always darkest before the dawn. Was that the last time you talked to him? No, I called on holidays, and he would call on my birthday. I guess we acted like nothing ever happened, which was stupid. I didn't want to ask about his lumber yard, and I'm sure he didn't want to ask about my job search. I never went back and visited. I think the last conversation we had was about what movies we had seen, and what exactly a best boy is in the credits. <laughs> I thought he would be here so much longer. Oh, wow. This is getting heavy. If it wasn't already abundantly clear that it would be. Here we are. I can't move. In the distance, the first tree illuminated the wasteland. She couldn't go home anymore. She did the only thing she was capable of. Moving forward. My dad died alone in the middle of the wilderness. I should have been talking to him more. I should have done a lot of things differently. If the first tree on earth brought life with it, if it taught the birds to sing and fly and showed saplings how to grow, what could it do for us? Don't be worried, Foxy. There's a lie at the end. There was a letter I received yesterday from a name I didn't recognize with a quote I can't stop thinking about. Death is not the opposite of life, but a part of it. Wise more words. I'm realizing one important truth. Each of us have our own journey to the first tree. But sometimes I'm not sure I'm ready to take that first step. You already have my love. First tree awakens and gently asks if there is one last message the fox wants to tell her children. She replies back and says, Distraction from tomorrow. 
I don't think dreams normally bring back to memory so many important feelings. Maybe it was just a dream, but it was also a gift. Yeah, I suppose. But tomorrow we're getting on a plane to the last place on Earth I want to be. The only person that would have made the trip worth it is gone. You're going to see him and be with him one last time before you say goodbye. I have one last quote for you by Emerson, sealed in an imaginary letter from me to you. It is the secret of the world that all things subsist and do not die, but only retire a little from sight and afterward return again. Go to sleep, my love. We have a big day tomorrow, but I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Good night, Rachel. Good night, Joseph. Wow. Six months later. Story's not over yet. Oh, wow. Oh, my lord. Are we Joseph? Looks like we've been moving. Oh wow, have we got a kid on the way? Oh. Bit of a dark night though. What's going on now here? Oh, there's a campsite. Truck. Oh, hang on. Fireflies. We used to camp out with him. Where we are camping out. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe. <gasps> what the hell? Is that the fox? It is. What's happening? Is like our spirit animal or are we still dreaming? Don't quite know, but feels like the two worlds have merged. Wow. It's the first tree. What is this? Something's written on there. destination that defines us, but the journey that to that destination. I'll never forget you. Oh. Reunited with her babies. David. <laughs> what 
a game. What a game. Josh Kramer, your music. That was, wow. I don't really want to say too much. I feel like it, it kind of takes away from what you make of it. But that was such a beautiful, beautiful way of showing it's about dealing with grief, about life. That was a beautiful game. I didn't anticipate it would be as maybe as long as it was. Or as long as this episode might be, if you guys are watching this. But thank you for joining me for the heavier than expected first episode of my 30 day game challenge. I'll make sure the next games may be a bit chirpier, a bit wackier, just to build us off that. But wow, whoever voiced Joseph, beautiful narration. But thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you did enjoy it, please do feel free to give it a like. Please comment your thoughts down below. How you felt about the story. What did it make you feel? What did it make you think of? I'd be really interested to know. But I will see you guys for day two. So thank you very much. And take care of yourselves. Bye.